I also would like to show you where the Java docs are generated, uh, typically within your NetBeans uh, project. So when we, when we generate Java docs, uh, and this is the project that I'm using, uh, then uh, the, you will find the Java docs subfolder um, in distribution, uh, exactly where your jar file is generated. There's also Java doc, and you'll see that this is the entire website that's generated. Um, and uh, uh, it includes the index, which is the entry point uh, into this website. If you'd like to uh, deploy this on the website uh, for your project, you can uh, point to this uh, place and uh, the entire documentation that uh, is uh, generated based on your javadoc comments will be uh, placed right here. So this is under the distribution subfolder. If you want, you can delete this javadoc subfolder and then you can regenerate it by going back to run and generate javadoc. So we have another example of uh, javadoc uh, right here. So you can see what the tags are. And as always, you need to uh, play a little bit with uh, these examples. So the next uh, uh, discussion is about multiple classes in one Java file. I generally uh, don't like to use uh, multiple classes in one Java file because it is a little harder to debug uh, such uh, uh, classes if you have a problem and you need to use the debugging environment and step through your code. It becomes more difficult uh, to uh, trace and step through the code with, uh, you know, more complicated organization uh, of your source files and the classes that may have nested classes in them. But sometimes it's a necessary technique and uh, most of the time it's used with um, event handling in graphical user interface applications. So, uh, this is an example. So here we have a class uh, line item that perhaps can be used somewhere in the structure of an invoice um, that uh, has an array of line items. And you can see that the product uh, is actually a, uh, an object, uh, an instance of an object uh, uh, that is a class declared in the same file. So this is just one file. And it can have this class without uh, public or private. The um, product accessibility uh, is uh, basically uh, within uh, the package level. So it becomes uh, private uh, to this, uh, uh, to this uh, Java file. So here we could experiment with this a little bit and try to add this class uh, testing um, local. Uh, it's actually not local. This is a uh, second second uh, class, All right? So something like this. Very silly. Uh, and we will then try to. I'll just uh, try to use this here. I'll just declare a reference like this. Okay, so this is fine. Um, we can even uh, print this. Just for the sake of testing, if I run it, I save everything and I run it. Um, there were some compile errors, so let's see what these errors are. We will do a clean and build, and it tells me that uh, right here. Uh, yeah, so the, the detection is that the variable might not have been initialized, so we'll just initialize it. Okay, so we'll create a real object using the default constructor. And uh, this prints basically a hash value derived from um, uh, the location in memory. So we have week three testing second class and it's uh, in, uh, 
in this memory right here. So now we can add another class, new class. Uh, testing class, just anything really. Uh, so I'll just say finish and here I'll try to do exactly the same thing. I'll see if I can use this class um, in this other class. So here we will add a method uh, void, void. It will be public. Uh, public void uh, test um, another class something like this uh, and uh, it will just simply try to do exactly the same thing that we did over there okay so uh, if we now go to our class our main method we can try to create uh, an instance of testing class which is that second class that I created testing class um, I'll call it ABC whatever right and it equals new uh, testing class just like this and now I will try to call ABC um, uh, test another class something like this so we'll see if this works uh, we should get two printouts we need to be able to see this printout because we call this method and we of course need to be able to see this printout first and I save everything and run it and so here we have uh, uh, we have these two outputs so you can see that uh, in case when uh, you create a class um, which uh, um, which appears to be below your public class in the same file and you do not provide private um, you cannot first of all you cannot make it public but if you don't make it private the access to this class is package level okay so this can be uh, uh, right now this uh, we can use java doc right here and we can document that this um, this class is shared uh, between all code in our package right so this is the demo of this class that is declared within a single file so typically you would want to keep it like this now if I make it private right if I make it private uh, then I'll actually modify it not allowed here so I'll, I won't even try so okay so this just has to be uh, the the package level access okay this is fine